Torch, it was kind of ironic that after the Thursday game, you really were harping about uh, you're harping on playing as a team, that you're the type of team you've got to play as a team. If you want to have success, it's not about star players. It's about everybody pulling the rope in the right direction. And I thought Saturday afternoon, your team went out there and did exactly that. Uh, is that the best team effort that you've seen so far this year? Oh yeah. Yeah. I, I, the, our structure, uh, our concentration towards our structure uh, when we're playing uh, the hockey we need to play, you'll see five guys in that neutral zone. You'll see five guys in the offensive zone. You'll see five guys in the defensive zone on arrivals that were all connected together. So it was, it, it was easily the most minutes we put in uh, as, as far as playing as five throughout the ice. Looking back on it, how important was it that Nick Foligno scores only 17 seconds after Victor Hedman does, where it looks like you're down early and all of a sudden, bang, you're right back in the game? Yeah, it was important. It's kind of a fluky goal, uh, the, the first one. Uh, uh, but to, to get right back at it, I think it's I think it's a really it's a really big thing this year with no people in the stands, how your team, the excitement of your team is going to come off your starts. You, you get down 2 nothing or you're just not playing well after a first period. I tell you, Bobby, the energy, I just, you, you have to manufacture your own. And if you're not playing that well, it's a bit of a, a you're slogging out there. It's, it's going to be tough to play. And uh, I think the starts of games and, and trying to create that energy will carry you through a game uh, of the intensity that you need. And how much was it as a kind of a character thing too, that you wind up, giving up a goal late in the second period, uh, you know, you've got a two goal lead, they cut it to one, but then you guys just kept it there. And then eventually you go and you add to it. But it, it seemed like the, the confidence coming out for the third period, you know, the first five games, it just didn't look the same Saturday. Yeah. It looked like, you know what, we got this. Yeah. Yeah. We just, I just think we felt uh, uh, every bell, everybody felt part of it. Everybody was playing uh, and everybody was involved because we were playing as a unit of five and, uh, our staple is our neutral zone is just trying to shut teams down and create some transition offense off of it. All lines were doing that. So I think everybody felt good about themselves. Well, I talked about Nick Felino scoring. How happy have you been with his start? He's already gotten a couple of goals. It just seems like he's got some jump here at the start of this year. Yeah. And it's, it's an important time for him and a, and a guy that struggled to score last year. Uh, him and I had a couple of talks this summer and, you know, kind of put some pressure on him. It's time to, uh, uh, you know, because he, he'd tell me that he's working on his defensive part of the game. That's great. But you have to be able to score too. And that's becoming a complete player. And uh, for him to get some confidence, he's killing penalties for us. He's on the power play. Uh, I, I think it's great that he's getting off to a good start. I think it'll, it'll just add, add to his confidence as far as puck moving and scoring goals. Did Cam Atkinson have that quickness? You always talk, talk about when he's playing his best game that he's darting around. It looked to me like he was doing that. Was, did you see more of that on Saturday? More so in that game than any other game. Uh, I still think there needs to be more. Um, I, I think that's a, uh, you can tell what Cam's going to do in a game is based on that, but it certainly showed up more during the game. And then I watched the tape. It, it showed up there also. So, uh, and another guy, power play guy, killing penalties, uh, uh, it was a, that line gave us some good shifts, him, Jens and Tex, and, uh, they gave us some good shift. Wierenski scores a goal and just a great shift off of that line and four checking. Uh, so there was um, some good stuff there. Eric Robinson has had so many really good chances to score this year. He's had some breakaways. He's missed the net. He's gotten stopped five hole, but the empty net goal he got, I think it might've been the most difficult shot he's taken all yes. year because yes. he had to go over to the bench. He was almost in the bench when he took yes. the shot. Right. Yes. Um, what have you thought about his play early on? Well, that, he's played really well. And, and I, when he scored in the empty net, I said to Lars, I said, you know, all the things he's missed where he's had a couple of breakaways and shot one wide in the corner on a breakaway and getting pressured there at the red line by our bench and throw it right in the middle of the open net, I just shake my head. But uh, uh, that line's been good. When I put that line together, Nash, Ham, and Foods on the right side, it's been a very good line. And uh, you can see some of the minutes they're getting and who they're playing against. We we have some confidence in that group. It needs to stay consistent. You know, it's had its ups and downs when it when it has played, but against Tampa, it was a very good line. 
Well, Miko Koivu is going to make his Blue Jackets debut tonight, and that means even though as well as everybody played on Saturday, somebody's coming out. What decision have you made? Yeah, Gerbs is going to come out. As much as I hate taking Gerbs out because he brings so much energy and I thought played really well, it, it, you know, I, I got to get Miko in there. He's going to kill penalties. He's going to be a face-off guy for us. Um, so Gerbs will come out. You know, I, you know, I wasn't sure of Stens, him, but Stens does a good job on our power play too. And and I think has played very, it was a tough decision for me uh, as far as who goes out. But for this game here, uh, Gerbs comes out and, and Stens will play on the right wing. He'll move to the right wing and he'll play with uh, Greg Aranko and, and, and Miko. You know, during the game the other day, I was talking about Kevin Stenland and I found out I was talking about him so much. I finally said, look, I'm not this guy's agent, but I really like how he plays. Oh. And, and that started in those two scrimmage games that you played. I thought he stood out. How much better has he gotten in the last two years that you've watched him? Yeah, you know, the biggest question mark with Stenz is his foot speed. And I, I think he's very deceptive uh, as far as what he can do getting up and down the ice. Uh, it seems like he, uh, he he's improved in that area. Uh, you know, he comes in in the bubble during the playoffs last year, comes in and plays really well when he gets, when he gets uh, put in the lineup. He's strong on the puck. He's got one of the best shots, best, best releases that we have on our club. Uh, understands his, his uh, effort that's needed away from the puck. He can play. And uh, I'm going to have some decisions to make here. Uh, you know, when, uh, when Patrick comes in and if we're still healthy, I've got some decisions to make. This was a real tough one to make uh, uh, just with Miko coming in here. And uh, so Stenz has, uh, has pushed himself up the depth chart in my mind in a big way as we've gone through the bubble in the start of this year. When you talk about his foot speed, I talked to a guy that you know very well, Terry Martin, who scouts for the Colorado Avalanche. And Terry said that when he watched uh, Kevin in the American Hockey League, he thought he was slow. But here in the National Hockey League, he doesn't see him as slow. And he speculated that because Stenland is so tall and so lanky, sometimes he's going faster than you think he is, or, or that foot speed, yeah. it's kind of deceptive by his size. Do you agree with that? I agree. I agree. And I think when you have people around him, and listen, Bobby, I, when you go to the American League, where everybody's chasing that puck all over the place, and there's a struggle as far as positional play, sometimes players, when they come to the National Hockey League, and they're surrounded with a, a system that's learned, uh, players that understand the system and play within the system and are better players right now, that helps a player like that. So, you know, sometimes players who you, you think struggle in the American League, they become the National Hockey League. They're really good players. So you got to be really careful how you make your judgments. And I think that falls on, on Stens here, but I, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get it off. He's put his work in. He, he is, uh, uh, has progressed the past couple of years and he can play in this league. It's just we got to figure out exactly where he's going to be, and he's going to push some people when Patrick comes in here as far as uh, getting popped out of the lineup. You know, one thing that I think makes hockey such a unique game is Saturday being an, an example. One of your best players is no longer in your lineup, and you go out and you play one of your best games. But you guys have been great talking about no distractions through all of these situations. I think you've been really, really good at it the last three years, quite frankly. Um, but with that being said, was there a little bit of, of relief that the situation was taken care of? And also, I would imagine your team is really excited by what Yarmo was able to do in making that transaction because they know that with Jack Roslovic and Patrick Line coming in here at some point, they've got two pretty good teammates that are on the way. Yeah, it's a really good deal for us. I think the team did kind of uh, relax a bit because it, th th this one here uh, uh, wasn't as smooth as, as uh, with Brett and Bob. This was different. This was a contracted player wanting out where Brett and Bob just said, free agency, we're going to go elsewhere. And they played. They, and, and they were great pros. Uh, um, this was a little bit of a different situation, and it was getting a little murky. Uh, everybody knew what was going on with it. But as far as, uh, uh, you know, when the games were played, uh, was there enough there given and all that? Those are the decisions I had to make. So it got a little clouded. And uh, uh, I, I, I give, I give Yarmo a lot of credit because the, the situation he was put in right, right away, as far as, you know, what was talked about that, uh, a player wanting to leave a drafted player that everybody put a ton of time into put Yarmo into a tough spot. I think he did a great job of making this deal. I think the team's excited and, and we wish, uh, we wish Luke the very best that he's going to help Winnipeg also. Uh, uh, but this, 
this, it, it, you become more of a team. Once you get rid of that, the cloud that's kind of followed us here, although we talked about it, it was still cloudy. Once that got away, it just, it allows you to become more as a team. Jack Roslovic practiced with you yesterday, but you've said that you're not quite ready to put him in the lineup. What do you want to see from him before you stick him into a game? Yeah, and it's not so much, you know, I, I wouldn't be afraid to put him in tonight, but I don't think our team, I don't think, you know, I, I felt funny taking Gerbs out. You know, I, I, I felt this team deserved another chance to play another game together after the way they played against Tampa. It was our best game. It was some, some crazy stuff going on around us. And uh, I, I thought the concentrated effort was really good. I need to get Miko in. You know, it, it's something that we want. We, we want him in here. We, we uh, signed him for a, a role that we want with the team. Gerb suffers for that a little bit. But I didn't want to ch- shake up the whole lineup. So Jack can wait, and uh, uh, we'll play the game. We got another practice today. We just showed some video with him. Uh, gets another practice tomorrow, then we'll make our call. How many sheets of paper have you gone through with possible line combinations oh, with those two gosh. guys? Yeah, I, I, I don't have those legal side pads. I get those long ones. I like those long ones. So <laughs> <laughs> it's been, uh, yeah, there's, and you know what, Bobby? Then I just said, you know what, enough. I said, <laughs> We may have three injuries by the time Lanny gets here. And so why even bother? But you can't help but project. Uh, yeah, but I, I spent a couple of days doing that. I said, enough. I'm not doing it anymore. And I threw it all out. You know, a lot of people do that on the computer or the phone now, Torch. No, I don't. I, I, I don't know how to use the computer. I, I know how to break down tape in a computer, and that's all I use it for. Hey, <laughs> I know you're always. Smart ass. <laughs> what, what's that? Don't be a smart ass. You know, I don't, oh, I can't, that. I can't help it. I mean, that, that's, that's part of this deal. You know that. Hey, I know you never worry about the other team, only your own team, but it's going to be weird to look across tonight. And you're going to see a lot of familiar faces with the Florida yeah. Panthers. And even if you look up above, because Billy Zito, who was the assistant general manager here is now running that team over there. So it's, it's kind of funny how many things in common these two teams have starting this series. Yeah. Yeah. And again, I, I hope we kick their ass, but I also hope the best for all those guys that we that we have a relationship with. And uh, yeah, so I, I hope the new beginning over there for them is going to go well. Not these two games, whenever we play them here, the, the 20 times that we do play them. Um, yeah, but other than that, I wish them all the very best. I love it when your heart felt like that, like you just want yeah. to kick them. Just That's touchy, I, I love that. Touchy part. feely today. Touchy yeah, feely you really today. are. You yeah. really are. I don't know what's going on here. That that's yeah. enough. I'm done with you. <laughs> All right. Torrance, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Good luck. All right, Bobby. Be well.